So what's Nginx? Nginx is a much newer web server that was introduced just over 20 years ago. It's open source, but there is also a commercial based option and you can install it in Linux, OS X, even Windows. It was designed to overcome the limitations of older web servers, offering better performance and scalability. But really it was developed to compete with Apache and IIS, which dominated during the mid nineties. It was also designed to solve a problem in which a web server could handle 10,000 requests at the same time, something that had not been done prior to that. Serving static content is Nginx's best feature because it's easy. By static content, I mean all types of data, text files, pictures, music, videos, all that kind of stuff. Nginx is able to serve that content quite easy. Nginx addressed some of the limitations that Apache and IIS had at that time like speed, performance, things like asynchronous processing, meaning that a single process could serve multiple requests concurrently. Nginx is able to do that. And a recent benchmark has Nginx being able to process four times the amount of concurrent connections than Apache at a much lower latency using half the amount of resources. Like I said, Nginx comes in the open source community version or the commercial paid version, though you do get some additional features. It's called Nginx Plus. When searching for Nginx, ensure that you're on the right site. So if you're using the open source, stick to nginx.org. If you're using Nginx Plus, ensure you're using nginx.com. They are similar, but they're different. A 2023 recent survey found that the most popular web server being used today is Nginx with 21%. 32% if you count OpenResty, which like I said, is an enhanced version of Nginx. That is a third of the internet being served through Nginx. Nginx is only second to Cloudflare when it comes to top million sites and ranked number one in most market share computers and domains. And also, Nginx ranks first in market share of computers by a large number, and also ranks number one in market share of domains. Again, you can see OpenResty here on the third, on the right-hand side. And like I said, OpenResty is just an enhanced version of Nginx. So when you really think about it, it's kind of two thirds of the market share in domains if you combine Nginx and OpenResty, of course. Nginx is trusted by thousands of companies. Some of the biggest companies in the world like GitHub, Cloudflare, LinkedIn, Microsoft. The list goes on, Netflix. On the next slide, I'm going to be going over Nginx overview and the architecture. Let's begin with understanding the event-driven architecture of Nginx. Imagine this, you walk into your favorite coffee shop and it's packed. People are lined up at the counter waiting to place their orders. Now imagine if the barista had to make each coffee one at a time in sequence before taking the next person's order. The line would be endless. But this coffee shop is smart. They use an efficient system. One barista takes your order and another starts preparing their drinks immediately. And by the time you get to the counter, your coffee is ready. It's fast, non-blocking, and everyone is happy. This is very similar to how Nginx handles requests simultaneously using an event-driven architecture. Unlike the old linear method of handling requests one by one, this event-driven mechanism is also known as asynchronous processing. This approach makes Nginx non-blocking and asynchronous, enable it to handle very large volumes of traffic with ease. Nginx super fast and ideal for modern web applications where requests can pile up quickly. It's like running multiple cash registers in a busy store instead of having just one. Imagine a busy restaurant where you have a chef in the kitchen preparing the dishes. Now this chef can only cook one dish at a time but a busy restaurant means multiple customers. So a waiter takes orders, 
takes it back to the chef. Once the dishes are ready, the waiter delivers the food to the customers. The waiter doesn't stand by each customer, but instead keeps moving back and forth between the chef and the customers, making sure the food gets to the customers. Now let's translate that to Nginx. Let's break it down into steps. The first step is the incoming request, or in our example, a customer's order. Nginx receives a new HTTP or HTTPS request from a client. Then it moves on to the second step, and that is the event loop, which in our restaurant example is the waiter. Nginx logs the event of the request, you know, writes down the order essentially, then continues in an event loop, constantly checking for new incoming events without blocking the process. This event loop is essentially our waiter going back and forth between the chef. Then it goes to the third step, and that's the processing event, which represents our chef making the dish. If it's waiting on data like a response from a database, it moves on to handle another event rather than just waiting. The chef wouldn't prepare one ingredient at a time. It would be, you know, chopping vegetables while it's waiting for something to boil, something to be ready. And finally, the last step is the response sent. It's essentially our waiter delivering the dish. So once the necessary data is ready, Nginx sends the response back to the client and moves on to the next event. In summary, Nginx takes the incoming request, which is passed to the event loop, where the request will be logged and sent to a third step, which is processing the event. It gathers all the data required and moves on to the last step, which is the response sent in which the data is sent back to the client. The event loop is key here though. The event loop will continue to receive requests, log them and pass them to the processing event step over and over again. Hence the name loop. In a restaurant example, we had one waiter and one chef. In a busy restaurant, we would probably want to have more chefs making the food because, you know, the orders can quickly add up. These chefs are called worker processes in, in Nginx. And each incoming request is handled by the worker process, which operate within the event driven model mentioned earlier. The master process oversees worker processes and handles tasks like restarting the workers, assigning them configuration. Think of the master process as a supervisor that is overseeing these chefs. Basically, the master is responsible for controlling and managing the life cycle of these worker process. It doesn't directly handle any incoming request, but plays that supervisor role, ensuring that the workers, the chefs, are running smoothly. When it comes to worker processes, each worker process runs independently and handles connections using an event-driven approach, the one that we just talked about. Multiple worker processes allow for parallel handler requests. So more workers, the more requests you can handle. If it's a busy restaurant, we want a few chefs, but we also need a few waiters to take orders quickly. Each worker process, again, each chef in our example, uses an event loop to manage incoming connections. In other words, each chef has its own assigned waiter. The event loop monitors multiple events simultaneously, such as new connection requests, data availability, and then processes this them as they occur. So now our restaurant has many chefs or worker processes, each with an event loop or waiter to be able to handle multiple requests at a time. Let's talk about Nginx and all its use cases. Nginx can be used as more than just a simple web server. It can be used as a load balancer, a caching server, and a reverse and forward proxy providing performance and security. So what's a load balancer? Suppose you manage a busy restaurant. Yes, I'm going to be using the restaurant example throughout this course. I do apologize about that, but it's the easiest way to explain a lot of these features that Nginx has. So back to managing this restaurant. 
you know, there's a lot of customers and they're waiting to be served. If you only had one waiter taking orders and bringing food, the customers would be waiting a lot and some may grow impatient, even angry. So what do you do? You could hire a few more people and ask them to share the load. And a load balancer is like the restaurant manager. It makes sure that internet traffic, in this example, the customer's orders, are handled appropriately. Using Nginx load balancer capability, you can configure one load balancer to send traffic to one or more backend web servers. Should you need to add more backend web servers, it's as easy as bringing that backend server and adding it to the list. A load balancer checks the health status of the backend web server, and if it can communicate with that server, it will not port any traffic to it. That way you can always confirm that your, tra your website is going to be running, right? Because if one node goes down, Nginx will simply just not forward traffic to the dead node, let's say. And as long as it has at least one node, your website will be running. Another use case is a reverse proxy. Suppose you have a package to deliver and you take it to your local post office, right? When you go into the post office, you don't hand your package directly to the courier drivers, right? You most li likely talk to a clerk who will get the information about where the package is going and schedule the courier driver who will pick up the package and deliver it. The package in this case is the request made from your computer. The clerk is the proxy and the courier driver is the backend web server that will take care of processing your request. So every incoming request must go through the proxy, which will take that request and pass it to the appropriate backend web server. Best practices is that your backend servers have an internal IP address not accessible to the internet, meaning that the only way to get to those backend servers is to go through the reverse proxy. Now, I know what you're thinking. What's the difference between the reverse proxy and the load balancer? They're often used interchangeably, but they have a different purpose. So let's clear that out of the way. A load balancer's job is to distribute incoming traffic requests across multiple backend servers to ensure that no single server becomes overwhelmed. Its goal is to optimize the distribution of traffic. Whereas a reverse proxy, in this case, its primary role is to act as the middleman between the user and the backend server. So a load balancer needs more than one backend node, whereas a reverse proxy could proxy traffic to a single node as its job is not to load balance traffic, but rather proxy traffic to a backend server. Another use case, obviously, is a forward proxy. Suppose you have a you have to run a public library, right? And in, inside this library, you have books, a few computer stations, and people can use to surf the internet. All of these computers get to the internet, but in order to protect miners from accessing potential harmful content, you would probably filter certain websites using a proxy and protect the client's online identity. Nginx can also be used as a Ford proxy and it's just like a reverse proxy, only backwards, or should I say forward. Instead of proxying incoming traffic, the forward proxy is controlling outgoing traffic. This can be used to block certain content, protect the client's online identity, because all traffic goes through this middleman proxy. Back to this coffee shop, right, that we talked about. Imagine you're running the same coffee shop and you have to grind the beans, brew the coffee and prepare it from scratch every time a, a customer comes in. This wouldn't be very efficient, right? It might work for the first two customers, three, if you're not busy. But as more customers come in, you're going to start to fall behind. Now imagine you prepare a batch of coffee that is ready on the counter for the next customer. When someone orders coffee, instead of brewing it from scratch, you just pour it into a cup. This saves time because you're not having to repeat the same process over and over. 
And that's exactly what a cache server does. It works in a similar way, but with data on the internet. A cache server stores a copy of the data, which is the batch of coffee in our coffee examples, so that subsequent requests can be served immediately from the cache server without need to pass on the request to the backend servers. Having cache prevents systems from processing the same requests over and over again. In the next couple of modules, we are going to be implementing a few of these, not all of them, but hopefully with that, you'll get a better understanding of all these really cool futures.